Hi everyone, this video I'm going to show you how to bring in an image, we're going to look at the asset panel, and we'll look at adding a class to it and experimenting with the differences between margin and padding. All right, let's get into it. Oh, and I'll also show you where to get free commercial use images for your project. It's a bonus. All right, now let's get into it. Okay, first up, get your image. Um, whatever club you're doing it for, um, you can go to something like unsplash.com. Unsplash is just a great uh, commercial use free images. Okay, it's pretty amazing. Um, I'm gonna click in here and type in juggling. Let's, I'm just assuming your, your club is juggling. Okay, and find any of these images down here. Okay, and hit this little option here, it says download. So find something for your club, yours might be, I don't know, sewing or cat juggling, whatever it is. Find your image, download it, and get ready. So I've already got my image, it's in the exercise files. So first thing is we need to add an image. Okay, so add this first little tab here. Okay, and down the bottom here, there's one called media, and there's image. Click, hold, and drag him, and just kind of plop him in where he needs to go. You can, I can put it above, this little blue line. Okay, I got an image. Let's go to choose image. Okay, this little setting pops out, okay, and you get to kind of do some basic stuff. I'm gonna use choose image, and what it did, it opened this tab over here, your assets tab. So we've been on the like add tab and the navigator, but now we've got this assets tab. This is where we keep all our images. You can either upload your image, or go you know, do this and go to browse and go find it. What I find super useful is just to drag it in there. And um, so where's my exercise files? So here's mine. I'm in the uh, club event site and I've got one image in here. And it, it's really cool because if you've got 20 of them, you just click and drag them in. Here we go, here's my image. It's uploaded, okay, and now what I can do is, because I've got the selected, if I click on that, it just kind of throws it in there, okay? So my little placeholder selected, just clicked on it and it just kind of injected itself in there, nice. It's way too big. You can just grab the edge of it, see this like little anchor point down here, click, hold, drag, don't have to hold anything down, just drag it up and it will resize. I want mine kind of that sort of size. I'm looking at my mock-up that I did, yeah, something like that. There we go. So in terms of image settings, you can be a bit more manual and you can get to the settings from it, you know, because at the moment dragging it's fine, you can kind of see the numbers there, but say it needs to be, you know, 250 exactly. You can either go to this little cog here, image settings, or there's actually a tab over here. So I'm gonna close that down, actually close it down. The same thing appears, see this cog here? They're the same thing. Two different ways of getting to the same thing. That cog, this cog. The difference between this cog, it has a bit more settings, a little bit more advanced. So um, the basics though, replace image here and we can type in this size. So I'm gonna say, um, this needs to be 250 and I'll leave the height to auto. Okay, if I type in the height, let's say I make it 20 pixels, you see it squishes it. So you wanna leave it as auto by deleting it. So there's nothing in there. There we go. Well, <laughs> 250. Here we go. All right, we'll talk more about images later on, but that is it for the moment. Uh, I promise we'll talk about padding versus margin. Okay, uh, so I wanna add a bit of space between my paragraphs, all very tight. So what I wanna do is add a, a CSS class, okay? And how do we do that? I have it selected, okay? I could just go to styles and start dragging stuff. The, what's gonna be the problem? That's right, it's gonna automatically create me a, a class, okay, that I, I can rename later on, which is fine, okay? But what I wanna do is be special and say, I wanna go image, okay? And this one's gonna be called uh, capital I, it uh, doesn't have to be, I just, no, it's a tech I have. So image hero. So I put it backwards because there's gonna be an image that's gonna be maybe in the footer or in the sponsor section. So I always put image first and then the other thing second, just so that it's easier to find later on. All my image styles are together rather than, you know, hero at the front. There we go. So I'm gonna do that, hit enter on my keyboard. Okay, and I'm gonna say, um, I'm gonna add some padding or margin. Now, with an image, padding and margin doesn't matter. So I'm gonna drag it down this top one. So I've got a bit of space there, nice. You'll notice that if I undo that, okay, to undo it, you hold down the option on a Mac, or oh, on a PC and click it, okay, and it will get rid of it. You, you'll notice margin, if I drag that up, okay, it doesn't visually look like it do anything else. Okay, so padding and margin for an image is pretty much, you don't have to worry about, you can do either. Okay, where it gets different is, let's say this section here. So I'm just clicking in this area here. We did padding before, okay? Let's say I want more, but I'm just gonna use margin because it doesn't matter, Dan said. But for a section, look at this. If I drag the margin down, okay, or up, you can see the difference between margin and padding. Padding is the internal bounds 
of what's considered the section and the margin kind of pushes it away from its next element. Okay, so it adds space between them. Even though, let's say, if I do it to this P tag, it's still doing the same. It's gonna either open up, um, padding's gonna push it from the inside of the P tag and the margin's gonna push the outside of the P tag kind of away from the next element. It's gonna look the same, watch this. So if I drag this up, I get some space. If I undo it, if I use padding, drag it down, this is weird, right? You drag it up, that drown. Internal padding, you can kind of see on these boxes, this is the inside, that's the outside. But what you can see is that it's actually the same thing. Like, you know, it, it, if I click off, it's got the same amount of space whether I use margin or padding. So it doesn't really matter here, okay, or with an image, but some things do. Like this, I want you to have some space at the top, okay, or some padding on the inside. You get the idea? We'll do it a few more times here, but in this case, if you are looking for a rule, okay, it's better for this case to use margins than padding because you can kind of see this boxes all the way up here. There's nothing really wrong with that. I'm gonna remember Option or Alt click it. It's better to kind of push it away with margin. So the P tag kind of is separate from this bit here. There's a gap in the between. It makes more sense later on when we make things clickable. If I want this to be clickable, I don't want like maybe all of this clickable as well. I just want the P tag to be clickable. Here we go. So I am going to, what have I done? I'm gonna undo that what I'm doing. So you're Command Z or Control Z on a PC. And I've got some, in this case, margin at the top of my image. I've added a class called Image Hero. We've added an image and it's awesome. We can get to the settings by clicking on this or with it selected, going over to here. Same, same but with some extra stuff. All right, images importing into Webflow. That my friend is the end of the video, uh, but not the end of the course, uh, the video you just watched. Um, it is a small part of my larger course called Webflow Essentials. So if you enjoyed the video, my teaching style, there'll be a card up here you can click or a link in the description, okay? And come join me for the full course. Uh, like the video as well, if you enjoyed it, subscribe to the channel for more stuff but hopefully see you in the course. Bye.